right, so I was planning on actually doing a funny skit for this guy's intro, but actually I'm going to use this time to self, I guess, sort of advertise our other channel, The Geek Chess, because over there I made a little diorama, as you guys can see what I just said on the table, to go along with our Shin Godzilla, which actually lights up and everything. So if you guys would be interested in seeing how I set this all up, and if you guys want to try to make something like this yourself, uh, definitely go check out that video. Link is in the description. Uh, there's also down in the description too a little tutorial on how to make damaged buildings as well. You know, Steve, people didn't come here for your crappy little diorama. They came here for funny skits and good action figures. All right, cool. Well, I guess I can uh, get you out of here then since they're clearly not here for you. Did somebody say good action figure? Okay, no, no, no. This skit's ending now. Just like his series should have ended at the film. Hey, well, you we take that back. The cartoon's not that bad. Hey, man, I just look super important. You, my name's Steve. My name's Ernest. And today I'll be going over the Essex Monster. It's Godzilla 2016, the fourth Awakening version. This is the second, well, I guess technically fourth figure we've gotten of uh, Shin Godzilla. It is the fourth. It says right there. Can't go wrong, right? Well, technically this would be five ish steve the box says four we're going with it <laughs> because the four form was the other shin godzilla and then this is like him with like uber beamies all the time but anyways uh the main reason i picked this up is because i heard that it was or at least from the pictures anyways looked a little bit better than the original we'll know a little bit more once we get it outside of the packaging but mainly just because it comes with pretty much all the accessories that you would want for him and except for his back beams back beams would have been cool I'll actually show you guys in the pictures, I make back beams. Turned out pretty good. Uh, yeah, but just check out the photos at the end of the video for those. But anyways, without further ado, for the packaging, I love this thing. It is amazing. It looks fantastic. I love the color of it. It's just popping out, makes him pop. Yeah, like the first one looked cool because it was kind of like the poster. And the poster was sweet. But this is literally like movie shot of him doing his breath effect. I wish the breath effect he came with looked as good as that though. Yeah, that, that would have been a little bit better. <laughs> you, you can tell that's a little Photoshop there, but the rest of this is the figure and it looks great. Hopefully he looks about that good side of the packaging, but you get Shin Godzilla, a bunch of stuff I can't understand. Godzilla 2016, Bandai Tamashi. Top, just some more Shin Godzilla. Other side, him in a nice menacing front pose. Opposite side, not a whole lot, but a little bit more purple down the corner. And on the back, you get him in some dynamic poses, him showing him with his effects pieces. And that's some more stuff I can't understand. And some Nico Mumbo Jumbo with him doing some more beam effects on the bottom. Steve, he's got the greatest beam effect I have ever seen. Cotton from my diorama? <laughs> no. That thing in a corner down there. It just looks amazing. It is pretty cool. But, uh, yep. Moving on to the figure now. So now that we got Shin Godzilla open up out of his cardboard prison, first and foremost, I'm just going to say it. The coloring on this guy is so... So much better than the original. Steve, you're supposed to save the that for the end. No, it's just like, just getting this guy out of the box and just kind of glancing over him. It's gorgeous. Like, there's a little bit of, like, weird purple here in some areas. Well, it's not just like that. If you look, turn, like, this leg, you can tell, like, there's, like, that little purple and then goes into that area right up there. It just looks a little bit odd. Yeah, well, it's like, here at his neck, it's slightly a little more purple than maybe I would like. Same with the chest. It's not embedded it's kind of overlapping but after the previous shin godzilla i'm not complaining <laughs> not nearly at all because you can already see he's got a little bit of a shine to him but he's not nearly as glossy his teeth are painted good same with we'll just get into that in a minute like i am super excited about that but uh yeah we'll move on to his accessories starting with his tail which uh funny note this is the tail that comes standard on him <laughs> i actually have the accessory tail already attached to him which is sadly a little better uh yeah i prefer this one more so than the regular one because it's actually the standard one is the same tail that we got pretty much but it's translucent and it's slightly off color to me than the rest of the body like i i, I get it but not as big of a fan of that so personally i like the extra head because it has that open jaw which looks really cool. It just has the extra face on it. Yeah, we'll pop it off here real quick. Yeah, there we go. So you guys can see it a little better. But yeah, this just has the open jaw there. You can stick the beam inside the hole here. 
And on this side, you can definitely tell that there's a little face there. But when you want to swap it out, there's just a ball joint here on the end. So this one would have been attached originally. You just want to grip the tail, pull it out, grab your accessory tail, and make sure you line it up straight where you want it on the tail anyways. So for the most part, it's kind of hard to show you guys, but you want the dorsal spine parts all lining up on the top. And then you insert the tail straight up. And then you just grab right at the base and just push it in. You'll feel a little bit of a pop. And then once it's in there, it stays in there really nicely, actually. And then next, we're going to attach his head. Now, Steve, I had a few people on Instagram complain about their uh, shin. He came in with the head was uh, completely off. Their ball joints are super loose on the head. And that seems to be like the biggest issue with him is his ball joints on his head. Yeah, because uh, you'll see right here. Watch. Boom. <laughs> Comes off pretty easy comes off real easy so you guys you know if you're watching it you're not the only ones like everyone does like that yeah so when you're wanting to take the head off you literally just grab it and just pull straight out same with the jaw just pull straight out really simple to do and then we have the extra split mouth but you're gonna want to attach the mouth first and then the head and then when you're removing it you go head mouth so when attaching it you just want to Insert the ball joint hole here into the ball joint. And from what I noticed, you kind of want to go a little bit at a downward angle. Otherwise, it doesn't like to sit in there. But you just kind of push in and make sure the lower jaw is kind of lined up straight against the back. Because as you see now, it's staying there pretty good. And then make sure I got the right head. And then you insert this part into the top. It's a little ball joint hole in the back insert in now for me i don't feel any pops it's just kind of like once you get it you just kind of know but it's really loose on this one Oop, too high there we go that feels on <laughs> so once you get the extra head on definitely reminds me of blade two. Oh yeah for sure for sure but the detailing on it's really nice though like you even can see in the molding here for the split section of the jaw. All the teeth are nicely painted on there. Same with the opposite side here too. And he even has the glossed over shark eyes. Now are the both heads the, exactly the same on top or? No. Uh, the extra head has the gloss eyes for his beam effect. While the standard one. It's just a happy face. Has his normal eyes. Just like you saw with the other Monster Arts figure. So once you get him assembled, he comes with a smoke effect base. Which this is what you're going to, uh, to attach the flame effect that he's going to be shooting out of his mouth. Which is just translucent plastic with some uh, more ember color on the bottom with a smoky gray on the top section. But the smoke part is not actually translucent. And then a little bit of a base on the bottom. And what's cool too is that the bottom's translucent. So if you have some kind of lighting you can sit this on top of, it'll actually shine through that really nice. Uh, just to show you guys, I think this actually lights up. Grabbing a light. You can see that shines through really nice. So once you get a little bit of a light, it actually reflects off there really well. So just as a little trick for you guys, if you have like a little light up display or anything, you sit this on top of, it'll look really cool, especially with a red color. So you take the base and then wherever I set that flame effect. He has this breath effect, which oddly reminds me a lot of Gamera 2s. It's not, it's not the exact same because you don't have that spreading apart portion where it engulfs into his mouth. It just sticks out of there. But it is the same coloring as with the display base, but overall does the job very nicely. Again, if you have a light display in the base, it'll shine through to this too, which is really cool. So... Once you uh, sit it inside of the base, you just kind of angle Godzilla over top of it. Just make sure because his head likes to pop off. Oh, this is probably my favorite breath attack I've seen. Yeah, no, it replicates the effect very nicely where he starts shooting the smoke into the city and then it kind of engulfs in the flames. Yeah. This really helps to showcase that scene entirely, which is pretty much what this figure is get, pretty much what you're buying it for is for that night scene. And he pretty much comes with all the accessories you really wanted for that, except for back beams. Back beams would have been cool. 
But yeah, so for this accessory, definitely 10 out of 10 for me. For his next one, which is his hyper beam. But first you're gonna have to set up the display, which is just a standard Tamashi Axe stand. But the tip here will not actually hold the beam onto it. So it comes with these little caps and it comes with two of them because if you have another stand, you can actually put uh, both of these on stands because they both come with little inserts for them. But for the most part, for the tail, it actually holds that in there very nicely. But you just insert this over top of the peg on the Tamashi stand. Then once that's on, you just kind of position your shin. So first and foremost, I'm going to attach this onto our Godzilla. And you can see right here, there is a peg hole on the bottom of the beam. You just attach that over top. And then we just bring our shin Godzilla back. And you just kind of line it up to the back of his throat. Now for the next one, right on the back of the tail here, you'll notice a little peg hole. You just take the beam effect, which are, there's two ends. There's a slightly elongated end. And then the opposite end goes off into a little bit more of a blunt end, while the other beam actually has a pointed end, which the pointed end is for his mouth. The blunt end is for the tail. And you just insert that into the peg hole at the tip of the tail. Just push it in there. And then bam, got a tail laser. So once you get him set up with both of his lasers, looks great. No, it looks amazing. Just the tail part kind of freaks me out because it always looks like it'll fall off. Yeah, that's the only thing I get a little worried about. Like, maybe if you have the extra stand, maybe go with that. But for the most part, like, from what I've seen... Pretty stable. Pretty stable. You just got to be careful not to knock into it while it's attached to the tip of the tail. Because then I can see horrible things happening. But for just sitting on your display shelf, this will look great. Now, just imagine if we had back lasers. Kind of like so. And it looks amazing. I think it looks cool. This is what we could have had, but we didn't. Oh, well, at least I have back lasers, so we're good to go. God, I wish I would have spent like $20 more and just send you to back lasers, you know? Sort of. There we go. <laughs> I have to arc them back a little bit so that'll come off. But yeah, so that's pretty much it for his accessories. Moving on to the actual figure. All right, uh, Arnaz had to go and um, make some lasagna, so it's just uh, me from here on out, guys. I'm sorry, you guys are stuck with me. So for a closer look at Shin's details, the head sculpt is, well, literally the sculpt is the exact same, pretty much what we got with the original, but you'll still see that it's done very nicely. And what is actually a pretty big improvement over the original is the paint job. Cause as you can see with the eyes look very nice, very piercing, his teeth are actually painted pretty well. Uh, there's a couple little hiccups here and there, but nothing too crazy like looking at it, it looks like teeth. The inside of the mouth is a very nice fluorescent purple coloring. As you can see, the other eye is still like shifted down a little bit. So it's still a little cockeyed just like the other one, but it's cockeyed in mostly the same pattern. So it's kind of different. Well, not really different between the figures, but still different. I want them straight, damn it. <laughs> Anyways, it's smacking the camera here. For the paint going down the side of his neck, it's a little bit more purple than I maybe would have liked, but still looks fine. I think if they would have contained it a little bit more inside of the uh, retracted gill section here, I think it would look very nicely. But for the dorsal spines here, are actually uh, translucent plastic with this nice frosted, like almost metallic purple with a little bit of a dark purple on the tips of the spikes. And again, these are all... The spines are very, very pointy. So just as a heads up to that. This side of the neck is a little bit more purple than the other one. But still nothing too bad. And then you got a little bit of the red here on the neck. And then this uh, purple barf paint job on the front of his chest. Uh, probably the worst thing on the figure here is just all this purple right here it's not the worst thing ever but if it could have been maybe confined a little bit better into the in-between sections of his chest plate would have been great but then again the other shin is just pretty much black paint all the time around there so i guess it's not that bad and it's kind of hard to replicate that in between anyways because it's very small minute detail so i understand the purple then it kind of helps to add to the glow anyways kind of like what they were doing with the new uh the NECA Atomic Blast 2001. But still, maybe 
tone it down a little bit more next time. Same with on the front of his thighs here. He's got like purple kind of just sporadically spread throughout the legs. Looks really cool though. Helps to give him a little bit more of a shine. Which also knows that for me anyways, the paint job doesn't appear to be quite as glossy as the original because grabbing him again. You'll see that it's not nearly as glossed over as the original Shin Godzilla is. Then uh, to me, it seems like the detailing too is a little bit more crisp, especially right here on the sides. You'll definitely notice that there's a lot more scaling while this is a little bit more smoothed over on this section here. But moving on to his arms, definitely tiny. Uh, you can see here the claws are painted very nicely. He has his little like sort of fifth pinky finger there on the sides of the hands. This one's kind of sticking out in the center of the palm. And also with the spines too, you get a bunch of little smaller spiky protrusions coming out to the base of the dorsal spines here. And then you can see a little bit more of the rib cage here on the chest section of the kaiju. Overall, the lower waist and the thighs look really good. And then for his more dinosaur-ish feet, they're actually painted pretty darn fantastically, if I do say so myself. The nails look really nice, and they even got a bunch of the little mini nails all over the place on the foot. They actually painted each individual one. While on the original, not so much. <laughs> they pretty much did the big toenails and a couple here and there call it a day. While on this version, they're all painted, which is really nice to see that nice improvement on the figure. Then moving down to his gigantic tail, which has these individual sections, which are each on their own little ball joints. And then the purple is painted throughout here as well. But the translucent plastic part is only on the dorsal spines here at the top section. Well, the rest of this is just uh, metallic purple for the rest of the dorsal spines here. Coming to the tip of the tail, which is pink. Still an odd color choice. Though I wish they maybe would have added a little bit more detailing here and there with a little bit more blacks or purples. Would have been really cool to see because some of the details get kind of lost in the translucent plastic. But still sculpted very nicely. And yeah, just overall, like the sculpt... Pretty much the same as what we got, but just the paint job, I feel, is a vast improvement over the original. With the only real problem I'm having here is the chest area here, where you have that little spiky bone, is probably the worst part of the paint job. But for pretty much everything else, great improvement. And then for his articulation, his head can't really look up, but if you move his mouth, it can. So if you move his mouth, he can look up a little bit more, but can't really line up the jaw then so like his head articulation's always been kind of weird he can look down about that far a little bit side to side a little bit of a rotation the joints of mine are very very stiff though so i just want to bring that up for his arms they can shift in and out a little bit actually a decent amount up and down then a little bit of bend here at the elbows you got rotations here at each of these little ball joints hand can rotate all the way around for his waist, can crunch down and about that far. So you get a nice look down, go up about that far, a little bit side to side. Again, you can hear <laughs> how tight these joints are and a little bit side to side. Just uh, be a little bit wary of the dorsal spines on the back. Just make sure you're not rubbing into anything because I imagine this purple is pretty easy to rub off on this kaiju. For his legs, can go outwards about that far, inwards about that far. Really nice forward kick. Decent backwards kick. Bend at the knee. Rotation at the knee. Rotation at the foot, if I can get the rotate by itself. There you go. And a nice bend here at the foot as well. And then for the tail section, again, all ball joints. So it arches up about that far, straightens up pretty well and can also shimmy side to side very nicely as well so the articulation of this guy was always pretty nice for what it is because he has like really odd proportions for his body the only thing is i kind of wish maybe the head can move up a little bit more but outside of that still very nice so for quick comparisons here we have the fourth form awakened version of shin godzilla compared nice to some other shin godzilla figures with the essays monster its original release and the NECA. And here he is compared next to the Essie's Figure Arts X Ultra X Ultraman Manga version and Bemular. And here he is compared next to some Robot Spears figures with the Gundam Wing Wing Gundam and 
Time, the Mobile Suit Gundam Charge Counter Attacks Sazabi. And here's some Bandai Vinyls with Shin Godzilla and the Bandai Creation Hidora, because reasons. And here is with the SH Monster Shinigawa-kun and Kamada-kun. Or second and third form, whatever you want to call them. So overall, with the SH Monster Arts Shin Godzilla 4 form awakening version, this figure is a great improvement over the original. I love the paint job on this guy with one minor hiccup, still looks really nice and still an improvement over the original. The articulation's always been very good on this figure, especially with this one having very stiff joints. The tail actually holds its pose way better than my original one, but the original one still definitely holds the tail upright the way it's supposed to anyway, so that was never that big of an issue. But what's really cool about this one is all the accessories you get with it. You pretty much get everything you really needed for a display. Back beam is maybe what would have been cool, but that's probably asking for a little much. But if you guys haven't picked up this figure, um, good luck. Since this guy was a web shop exclusive, so he was already kind of hard to get a hold of anyways. But um, I would recommend if you guys are interested in this figure and didn't already get it, uh, check around on eBay, you might be able to find a decent price on them. Uh, Facebook groups is a good way of trying to find used figures. Or even places like AmiAmi, uh, their pre owned section, they get stuff like this in periodically. Like, I even seen this guy show up, like, literally, like, two days after he was released up on there for a really decent price. Or also Mandrake. So, yeah, if you guys are able to get him for a good price, uh, I got mine for just about 200 I think he was slightly over after shipping. Uh, definitely recommend it. He's a really great figure and honestly probably the best Shin Godzilla figure in my collection. Uh, missing the X Plus, but I'm hopefully going to try to write that wrong sometime in the near future. Hopefully. But what do you guys think? If you guys picked up this figure, what's your favorite Shin Godzilla figure? Is 1998. Just more your thing. Please let us know in the comments. Look closer picture of this guy on Facebook. If you want to click the link in the description below. We also have a Patreon account with exclusive prints. If you guys would like to go check that out, also down in the description. And help us defeat those guys just by hitting the like button, subscribe, become a ranger today, and see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. God, I can't believe Steve bought an X Plus. I, th I thought he loved me. You know what? Next time I see him, I'm going to give him a thing or two. Ah, ah, crap. I'm falling quick. Somebody help. Quick, take my strong hand. What What do you mean, strong hand? You know what? Can you, can you go get somebody a little bit more suited for this? Sure thing. One second. Faster! Hurry, you need to save him. He needs help. You know, I thought you were just joking around. But your dumbass is serious. For the love of Kamekers, get somebody that can actually help. Just give me a tail or something. Did somebody say they want some tail? You know what? I... It's not that far to the ground. Here, I just welcome Super Important Views. My name's Steve. My name's Ernest. And today I'll be going over the Bandai Tamashii Nation SH Monster Arts Godzilla 2016, the second and third form. I forget what their official names are, though. It's Form A and Form B. So Steve, I know it's like Kamada Kun and Turkey, <laughs> something like that. I just slipped my mind. I just I know them as A and B. So Steve, are you ready for this? According to the Instagram, you're going to be super happy about this figure. Sweet. In a bad way. Oh, but I like being happy in good ways. Oh, no, no, no. According to the people, this thing is supposed to be hideous, wrong, chip painting, all good stuff. Sweet. Well, that makes me excited to get it out of the packaging. <laughs> well, if you guys don't know where this is from, this is from the film Shin Godzilla. It came out in 2016, where these are the early stages of the kaiju. We reviewed the actual SH Monster Shin Godzilla, which is the final version of the kaiju. Well, before it got beams. That figure comes out later this year. So, anyways, uh, with what I said, I'm a little more hesitant to get these guys out of their prison. But, without further ado, further packaging, very black. Like, it is a very dark looking packaging where you get the Form B, Form A on the front, some stuff I can't understand. I know that's Godzilla right there. Shin Godzilla. With uh, Tamashii Nation Bandai 2017 was the release. Top, more of the same. Side, Nice shot of the third form. This side, back of the packaging, just shows them in mostly the same poses. But you get to see it with Shin, some stuff I can't understand, and some Lego Mumbo Jumbo. So let's get these guys open up. Ah, uh, the cardboard prison. All right, so now that we got uh, Kamata Kun and Shinagawa Kun, I looked it up. Probably said it wrong. <laughs> what were those again, Steve? Hold on, I will look it up on Google again. <laughs> Shinagawa Kun is uh, what the third form is called. 
Because I don't want people yelling at me in the comment section, so we're just going to call it that. <laughs> call it Sheeny. Sheeny oh, I, I like your other name better, Steve. Turkey? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it's like, there was something, it was like turkey. I'm not, I can't remember. Somebody commented on it in a previous video. Probably but I remember he has come out of Kuten. So, because most of these guys are named after like the cities that they like rampage through. But he didn't rampage through any city. He just like popped up and puked all over the place and died. The little guy. Well, yeah, so that's what he did. He, on the <laughs> other hand, was like, I'm stand up. Things, there's a couple of helicopters. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Well, no, that's not true. What he stood he's up like, and he's tripped over. Just... He tripped over, fell in a building or something like that. Oh, no, that's what he did. And then he's like, "I'm tripping over these buildings. I guess I better stand." <laughs> and then he learned to stand. Still has the stubby arms though, so sad day for him. But anyways, uh, first we I guess we'll go over Kamada Kun here. And then we will go over the more big guy here in Shinigawa Kun. All right, so for Kamada Kun, head sculpt actually looks really nice. I like how they painted his eyes, which uh, is more of a gray color. Like, it almost looks silver. It's kind of weird. His teeth are painted in a bone coloring, which is really nice to see, especially on this smaller figure. Because with uh, Shin, the big guy, his teeth are uh, a little bit hit and miss for the most part. But this little guy here actually seems to be painted very nicely. Mouth is done in a flesh color tone. Wait a minute, you tell me they put more effort into him than not in the shin? I said nothing. But <laughs> moving down his neck where you have his giant gills that you saw the blood flow out of in the film. Really nice looking. A little bit of red splotches in a couple of areas, but nothing too crazy. Same with right here at the top section of his uh, breastplate. Dorsal spines, very tiny, very cute. Got the same kind of blood red that you would see on Shin on the back here. Uh, again, a little bit of bleed over here on the top part of the neck, but it's kind of noticeable on the side. It's not horrible, but it could maybe have been a little bit cleaner on the top there. But detailing is pretty nice for especially how small this little guy is. And for his body, you got his little nubs sticking out on his sides here. That are his undeveloped arms. You got the trademark little front part of his chest plate sticking up and protruding, like almost ripping out of his body. And you can see his rib cage is here on the side. Body, color tone wise, is mainly more of an olive color. On this one, well, like the Bandai vinyl was like a very flesh tone. Well, he is more like camouflage. I like, actually like his color. Then for his little legs, very dinosaur shaped. Got some muscles protruding out of the sides. Got a little bit of scaling right here on the top scaling. section. It looks like holes. Kinda. It kind of reminds me of those like one plants that you see in the memes all the time. Where like people would take them and try to make it look like, you got a skin condition. He has that skin condition. I forget what the plant's called, but it's like those little pods. You know what I'm talking about? No. You're no help. Uh, yeah. You're that a long time ago. <laughs> Again, why are you here? We don't. We still have never answered that question. Like, how many videos in? How many? Guys, can you let him know why I'm here? Got some bone coloring here for his little nails. Same with on the back section here. Thing is, is mine has a little bit of paint chips here and there, which is a little bit detracting on this leg. Uh, you don't really have... I don't really have any on this side though, so it's just got a little bit of wear over here, but nothing, again, it's not super noticeable, it's just when you're like intently looking at his leg right there, you notice a couple of things. But for still, you have the veins here stretching out to about the halfway point. I don't remember that being like that predominant in the movie. He's jacked. And then you have this little fin here which disappears on shinagawa -kun. But it's very thin. Again, more fish-like here. Imagine it's mainly used for swimming. But overall, like detail-wise, other than a couple little hiccups in the paint job here and there, looks pretty nice. Like, I'm actually relatively surprised with this little guy. You're going to have to figure out how to fix his leg because he keeps twisting around looking creepy as heck, dude. Yeah, this uh, ball joint here is a little loose, so it likes to kind of spin on its own. But anyways, for his articulation, his head can look up about that far, down about that far. The jaw is articulated, so that will open 
and close. Can also pivot a little bit to the sides. His neck can shimmy side to side, but you have the possibility of the head popping off just like it did. And then the neck can go about that far, down about that far, because it's just on a little ball joint. Be careful not to take it off again. <laughs> yeah, try not to. Then his nubs are articulated, which can kind of do a little chicken wing. Can move a little bit forward and back as well. Then for his legs, out about that far, inwards about that far. Can go a little bit forward and back. Not the too crazy. Can't really rotate there either. But these are on ball joints too. So you get a little bit of play up and down, a little bit of rotation. Same with right here. It's pretty much the motion you can get with it. And then these can also rotate on each of the joints as well. And then for his tail, can go about that far to the sides, uh, that high up, and that far down. And then we have Shinagawa Kun, which is probably the one I was most excited to get out of the sets. Granted, Kamada Kun's cute and his scenes are adorable, but I kind of like the Bandai vinyl more of uh, Kamada Kun. So I was, and between the two Bandai vinyls, more than Shinagawa Kun. So I was hoping the Monster Arts ones would be uh, a little bit more flip flopped. Because, uh, I don't know, he just looks really cool. Although I kind of wish his head maybe moved a little bit more down if he's standing straight up because those dorsal spines. But anyways, for his head sculpt, looks really awesome, actually. Very impressed with the sculpt here. His eyes look very nice, too. Again, have that same kind of gray, metallic, silver appearance. I like the detail that you can see on the top of his head. You have his little nostrils on the front. Mouth section. Painted pretty nicely. Same what with the teeth. sticking out? Or is that just, oh, that's the jaw, right? Yeah, that's like his uh, throat section right here is what's uh, showing up there. Because he doesn't actually have like a tongue or anything. But his mouth has some flesh tones and this kind of orange color. Kind of like fire orange. For his neck, you yeah, have what's starting to show up for Shin Godzilla here where the gills are retracting into the side of his neck. Dorsal spines are a little bit more elongated and starting to change color. They still have that. It's sort of green, but it's more turning into these like brownish orange hue. Like it's it's a very ugly color, but he's an ugly color kaiju, so I like kind of works out. Better, Steve. I don't know, like these do look really nice. It's mainly right up here. There's a bit of a gap, but you can hide if you have his neck looking straight up like that what the heck is he looking up to but when you start trying to articulate it a bit because i kind of need his head to shift downward which i don't think it's gonna do all right so if you want to look it down you have a little bit of a gap there you know looking at these two guys i can see evolution of godzilla and he was just a lot of pain dude yeah, I don't imagine it was pleasant, especially how fast that evolution happens. Because, like, look at top of his, like, dorsal spines. Like, look down there. You can just see, like, his skin being ripped apart and everything. Like, it's yeah. painful. Well, this never actually goes away, even in the in the final form. Like, it's just constantly exposed, which is pretty much, like, his weak spot. Well, was his weak spot until you start shooting beams everywhere out of it. <laughs> But you see the same fleshy tones on the intersections of the dorsal spines looks really nice. It's just, yeah, that color. Odd. Stomach has a crap ton of wrinkles. Got the same little spiky protrusion on the front section of his chest plate. His arms are starting to develop here. Got some bone coloring for the nails, which is really awesome to see. That little tension, the detail on the section there. Because, again, kind of was kind of worried with Shin that they may like skip out in these little sections here. But it is nice to see that that's actually painted, like, even on the bottom of his feet, too. Painted very nicely. Like, the skin tones there, too. And you get that little bone protrusion at the top section of his thigh. Looks really good. But, alright, so moving to the tail. You'll notice, right here, that the tail has this orange hue that comes down to the tip of the tail where it's starting to form the little mouth thing there. It's right there, you can actually kind of tell it the face. More so than the, yeah, the, 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 the like form. 
Yeah, well, the second form, yeah, it's just a fin. But, for the tail, I kind of wish that if they were going to be doing this orange hue, that they maybe would have had it kind of bleed into the body a little bit more. I think that would have looked a little bit better, because it's odd seeing it just stop. Why, you don't like that, Steve? I thought it looks nice because you can tell it was made on factory line, you know, like Ford assembly where like different parts are made by different people, you know. Oh, so like this section was done by someone else and this one. Yeah, somebody else. and they Somebody didn't care quite as much. <laughs> and I, I don't even know how they actually assemble these in a factory, to be honest, because I know like each of these parts are made individually. So it could be. Or, th or somebody just could have had a bad day, Steve. You don't know, man. You can't be mad at them, right? Well, the one thing that I could say that about the tail in general, like the paint job is meh, but uh, like if it would have bled over, it would have been fine. The thing I don't really like though is you can see here a lot of nice details with the wrinkling going very nicely into the mold. Same right here for the first section of the tail. But once you start going down the tail, the detail just kind of fades. All right, never mind. They weren't having a bad day. They were just lazy. And then right at the tip, you start getting more of that detail again. And it's just kind of odd to see. Because, like, so much detail is put into the, the upper body here. And then once you get to the tail, it just starts to fade. And then, because it's kind of, like, shifts. Because even right here, it starts to fade into the detail. So maybe that just has something to do with the computer mold. Maybe. But... I kind of wish they maybe would have took some liberties and maybe added a little bit more detail. Just so you can keep up with the quality they have up here on the top section of the body to match the tail. It's standing on your shelf. It's not going to really show up that well, but... Yeah, that's, that's easily the biggest negative of this guy right now. But outside of that, I haven't really noticed any imperfections in his paint job other than just choice of paint, how they painted it. Uh, other than he has like a little bit of white specks right here. Yeah, I was about to say any like actual paint damage on him or just those white little things. Here? Yeah, it's just this little white specks here. I'm not exactly sure where they came from. But outside of that, like paint job on the face looks good. Dorsal spine seems to be fine. I don't really notice any bleeding. It's mainly just the tail section here, which is, it's not, uh, one thing I want to point out too, it's not just on mine in general. I have seen other people that have acquired this figure actually have the same kind of orange issue here where it just stops at the body. So it's not like Shin where you have like certain people might have better figures. If you buy this figure, it's going to be exactly the same. You mean just like the choice they made when they painted it? Yeah, it's just design choice there. And then for his articulation, head can look <laughs> up about that far. Found the ball joint. His head can look up about that far. Down about that far. Mouth can articulate on the top and bottom, but it opens up about that far. Closes fully. For his arms, got a little bit of a rotation there and a bit of a wiggle. So you got a decent amount of play to it. Uh, goes up about that far. Down. About there. Feels safe. His body can stiffen up about that far. Bends down about that, so you do get the crazy shin bend like you see on the big guy. Has a little bit of a wiggle to it. And rotation as well. For his legs, can go <laughs> out about that far. <laughs> inwards about that far. Uh, oh, actually, there's a little bit of paint right there. Oh, I got the leg out. See a little bit of the orange there. Okay. Go forward about that far. Maybe a little bit more. Backwards. About that far. God, every time you move that, I'm just so afraid you're going to chip that paint. And then, yeah, that's the only thing I kind of get concerned too is rubbing. But it's an articulated figure. Like, it's, it's a concern. Uh, his knees can bend about that much. Got a rotation. He can kick a soccer ball. He can. And his feet can bend about that far. Nice pivot. And wiggle to it. And then for his tail, can go about that far to the sides up about that far and down about that far and for some quick comparison here we have Kamato kun and shinagawa kun compared next to some other sh monsters figures with godzilla jr who i feel like is pretty much the same in terms of quality and like articulation 
and Shin Godzilla. And here they are with some NECA action figures, or I should say X Plus, like the last one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with Otachi. <laughs> well, anyways, that was a little inside joke. But here we have the NECA Shin Godzilla and the Reactor Gold Godzilla that was the Loot Crate exclusive. And here they are next to their Bandai Vinyl counterparts. God, I think the Bandai Vinyl looks actually better. Uh, The uh, smaller one. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I still really like this one, actually. He, on the other hand... It's just... <laughs> you're winning. <laughs> Talk about a different color, though. Look at that. Complain about that, people. For sure... Okay, just, yeah, it's not, it's not even close to being the same, but not, then again, they aren't either. And here they are, comparing next to the greatest kaiju of them all. Well, at least we know where they got the inspiration for the likeness, you know? The ugliness part, at least. Yep. With the X-Plus Gabra and the YMSF Gabra. So overall, with the SH Monster, a second and third for Shin Godzilla. I actually like these figures. For the price tag that I got them at, at 80 bucks, I think these guys are really nice. The detail on them is solid. The paint job... A little bit hit and miss, but still pretty good for the most part. Articulation's actually really good on these guys, especially for how small they are. So, overall, I'm happy at what I got them for. So, if you guys can pick them up for about retail, definitely recommend picking up the set. Especially if you already have the Shin Godzilla figure. Now, third party price on the other hand, because I've already seen people trying to get like 150 at least for these guys. That seems crazy. Like, that's really high for these. Like it, it, to me, at that price, it's not worth it. But no, like Steve said, overall, they're not that bad. And for the price, for retail price, they're definitely worth buying, you know. But if you can't afford a third-party price, there is other choices you can get, like the Band on Vinyl, which, in my opinion, I like them a little bit more than these guys. Yeah, they are a little larger. They're um, cheaper. That, and they do have an exclusive set coming out where you get Frozen Shin with it. Like, that would maybe be a way to go if you guys are just looking for a version of the creatures in your collection. But if your heart is set on the Monster Arts one, definitely look around for trying to get these guys closer to retail. Which is what, around $83, something like that? Yeah, like closer to 80 bucks is where you want to be at. But yeah, if you missed out on them, definitely check out like AmiAmi's pre-owned section. They sometimes get them in on occasion. Uh, Facebook groups, there's a few other websites you can... Uh, Mandrake is another one that you might be able to find these guys on. So definitely check around for them and be vigilant. Stay away from eBay, trust me. Yeah, <laughs> you might be able to find somebody that has it like per, like used on there. You okay. might get lucky, but... Because when this came in, I looked and there was some that were already trying to get like 220 for it on eBay, which is insane. Yeah, which is stupid. But they are definitely... Uh, a nice uh, surprise compared to what we got with Shin Godzilla. But what do you guys think? Have you guys picked up the second and third form Shin Godzilla figures? What's your favorite Shin Godzilla action figure? Or is 1962 just more your thing? Please let us know in the comments. Look closer picture of these guys on our website if you want to click the link in the description below. We also have a Patreon account if you guys like to help support the channel. Also down there. And help us defeat those kaijus by hitting that like button, subscribe, become a ranger today, and see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. bye. Alright, sweet. Finally got my Shin Godzilla to do his official review. It's Dave. Why does everybody hate me? Well, what do you mean, Shin? I just recently got you. you. You look okay to me right now. When you weren't in the room, I went on your Facebook account. Okay, well, that's asking for trouble. And everybody on there said that my pay job is fugly. That people should get refunds on me. Well, Shin, I won't know that till I go over all of you. Because some people get kind of drastic online. And it's not like this line has been perfect <laughs> from the initial get-go and through the production run anyways you're just trying to make me feel better oh no seriously i don't think people have quite forgotten our good old little friend here hey you guys <laughs> they think i have problems hey man just welcome to super important views my name's steve my name is Ernest. And today I'll be going over the Essex Monster Art Shin Godzilla. Or you may know him as Shin Gojira, uh, Godzilla Resurgence, Godzilla 2016, the 2016, newest Godzilla. 2016, Steve. Yes. And this is a import from Japan because there was literally no way really to get stateside unless you go through a third party, which makes this guy stupid expensive. Uh, initially when I got mine, he was $99 and like some change plus the shipping. Finally getting this review out because it took them literally three weeks to get this thing to my house. Even though Mia shipped two weeks after this guy and showed up the exact same day. They just knew which one we wanted more, Steve. I don't think they did. Yeah, they did. I don't think so. That's why we got nope. Mia faster. No, nope, definitely. No. Um. You want me to stab your box, Steve? But 
the box is already banged up enough as it is. <laughs> and why, you why, can't why, hurt it anymore. And why are you reviewing it from the back, Steve? Alright, well, anyways, without further ado, for his packaging, uh, I consider this the front of the package. Granted, no. you guys will see the back here in a second. But for the front here, back. we have a nice image of Godzilla, the figure inside of the packaging, looking all menacing, slightly looking down. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, Monster Heroes, Godzilla 2016, Shin uh, Tomashi Nation Bandai and some copyright stuff. On the top of the packaging, some translucent plastic here. Shin Godzilla 2016. Sides of the packaging, just transitions into the spines. I also want to point out, very reminiscent of the poster, which is why I really love this part in particular. Uh, on the side here, you have him in a bunch of dynamic poses. Shows you what he can do. He can bend over stupid far. And then for the back of the packaging. Front packaging. Back. You want to know why I say it's the back of the packaging? Because on all Tomashi boxes, the tape is always on the back right here. Guys, so let know in the comments this how is wrong the front. Because also on the back, you have the description here in the comments, like they do on the other back of the packagings. Nope, oh, front. But on the back, you can see uh, Shin Godzilla inside of the packaging. Looks pretty cool overall. Like, it's just a red box, but it works for me. Works really well for the character. I gotta, like, honestly tell you, I'm surprised how big this box is. Like, I did not expect that. When I opened it, I thought those were the two Mias in the original box. Yeah, we did an unboxing on the Geek Chess, and Ernest failed to tell me that this guy actually came in. Because <laughs> it still said he's in Japan somewhere, so uh, we've just been waiting on this guy forever. And yeah, this box is for Jai freaking Ganic, but you guys will see why in a second here. And on the bottom, you got Godzilla roaring upside down and some Lego Mumbo Jumbo. So, let's get him open up out of his cardboard prison. Alright, so now that we got our Shin Godzilla opened up out of his cardboard prison, first and foremost, this figure for a Monster Arts, especially a Godzilla, is stupid huge. He's actually a pretty tall individual here, but look at that tail. Size does matter, Steve, just so you know. But that's not what my wife... Size you know what? does matter. I'm going to get into it. But what's really impressive about this tail here is if you articulate it upwards, it stays upright. Which is really good to see because in the film, his tail is like almost always like flailing up in the air somewhere. You never actually see it like laying down. Which is also it doesn't really pose very well if you try to do it. Because the end is still going to be sticking up pretty much no matter what. But it's still pretty articulated except for right here mine's starting to loosen up a bit but if you have it touching the table here it'll hold its pose which is really really nice to see but he does not sadly come with any accessories which is actually a little bit of a let down because i really would have loved to seen his atomic breath or some form of it because technically since he has all the red paint here it might have been nice for him to maybe come with like the flame breath kind of coming out of his mouth a la the gamera 96 figure like, they almost could have probably just reused that and just retooled the bottom a little bit. It would have been really cool just to be able to insert it into his mouth. Because with how stupid huge his mouth is, I really wish I could put something in it. You know? Alright, so for a closer look at Shin Godzilla's details, head sculpt actually looks really nice. Pretty reminiscent of the film. Other than, uh, it definitely, you could tell that his lower jaw and upper jaw are definitely fairly segmented. Which, I kind of wish the mouth maybe closed a little bit tighter. But still looks really nice overall. You get that very burnt leather skin that was very iconic for that Godzilla because it kind of harkens back to the reason why Godzilla had those wrinkling effects to begin with in 1954 is to sort of replicate the burns that uh, radiation victims have. And this guy definitely looks like he's been through the ringer. But his paint job is primarily in a very black charcoal color which you can see a lot of red splashing here and there. Uh, especially on the top portion of his neck here is definitely a little bit redder than I'd really like it to be because you see here the base of his neck is in the same kind of glossy charcoal black that a lot of the body is this is just mainly red and then the same with his chin and then you have the glossy black for the top part of his head isn't that what like everyone's talking about the old redneck thing uh yeah some people have it better than others uh this isn't really all that bad like with all the lighting on it yeah, it definitely shows a little better, but it's standing on my shelf because I already put it in my display case. You barely notice it on this guy. Because what's supposed to be is there's supposed to be like red lines in the in portion of the neck here where the muscle is. And then you'd have some up here, but instead it just kind of has some red just kind of splashed everywhere. And then for his eyes, if you can see it on mine, is on this side of the head, it's looking down. 
So it's getting ready to stomp on some people, some citizens of Tokyo. Well, the other side is looking straight at the camera right now. So, uh... Don't you make fun of him. When you have him looking straight at the camera, kind of looks like he's been hit over that with a baseball bat a little bit. Like, we should just have some of the door axes just floating around his head. A la Tweety <laughs> style. And my little theory is, is possibly it could be for posability purposes, because you can have him looking this side to look downwards. And this side... He looks straight. From the front, it's going to look goofy, but you can't really win both ways. But I think in terms of it being shifted, it gives you more options in terms of display factor, depending on which way you have them looking. Now, again, it just could be QC issues with everybody, but it sounds kind of weird that everybody has that issue. But the details for the inside of his mouth, oh boy, they did not spare any expenses there. No, he like, actually... Look at that throat hole. <laughs> oh my God. So red, it looks like he actually ate someone. Yeah, I know. You even have like some of the lining here you see for the base of his mouth. Because in the film, he didn't have a ton. Because he didn't really need it. He doesn't eat things. So what's what's the use for the ton? Except for the top of the mouth, there's a lot of nice details there. Very glossy, very shiny and wet looking. Looks great. Teeth are painted very nicely too in this very bone coloring. And you can see that they are kind of just all over the place. On both sides, looks good. I have seen on some people they're not quite as well painted as others. I think I, that's like one of the parts I really lucked out on was that I really don't have any complaints for his mouth area there. And then you can get this thing pretty freaking wide, which is really nice. Especially for, if you can with a breath effect, you can work with pretty much anything you wanted. Looks great. But yeah, he has a really nice roar. And then starting to move down his body, you can see his dorsal spines here. A little smaller than some of the other Godzillas, but it's very accurate for the film. But you can see they are also very glossy black with some red splashed here and there for the highlights for the burning effect. And then if we bring it around to the back, you'll notice all that red, especially at the top part of his head. <laughs> Looks like... <laughs> Whoa. I'm sorry. The skin is not quite fully formed in these little sections. God, he looks like a meat house or something. Like, he just, he just came from the butcher shop. And came he was the butcher. <laughs> Which is sweet, because Godzilla's supposed to be scary. And, uh, yeah, there's not really too much more terrifying than uh, exposed skin all over your back. No wonder he's so grumpy. Can you imagine all the pain? Yeah, especially when they drop the bombs on him and just blood just splurts everywhere. You think, actually, they would have covered up afterwards because he evolves throughout the movie? So you think he would have lost the red, but instead he just grew back lasers. Huh. And then coming to his chest, where you have his little trademark point here on the front of his collarbone. And then the front of his abdomen looks really nice too. The only thing is, is for how much red is on this Godzilla, he doesn't have any on his front. Which, uh, in the film, he does have some like details splattered here and there on this guy. Which you don't actually see on this version of Shin Godzilla. The Bandai vinyl, you can see the red there and it looks really good. And I think if they would have added that to the body here, it definitely would have uh, helped to add a little bit to the detail. But the mold is definitely there. Because you can see it with all the inner workings of the skin kind of just stretching over this front bone of his chest right there. Looks nice. And then for his arms, you have his giant shoulders with his tiny little hands. His little T-Rex hands. Still ugly. And for the paint job on his nails, uh, one is definitely bone colored. The other one kind of looks gray what? to me. I just noticed that. Yeah, the one is definitely painted pretty nicely. The other one is a little off color because I don't think they added as much paint to it so the black's definitely showing through there so it's kind of discoloring it a little bit. Lazy. A little bit. It's more of just like, I don't know, inconsistencies in the production run because you generally don't have like, it's not the same person paint every single one of these and they're kind of in a rush. So, But what's kind of cool is you can see his little finger right there. Still. <laughs> so again, the mold is really, really solid on this guy. And then moving down to the base of his body with his gigantic hips. Looks really good. Very trademark Godzilla. What is not very trademark Godzilla is his T-Rex feet. What? Which you can also see the paint job on the nails of the toes is not very consistent either. Like this side, bone coloring looks really nice. This side starting to fade already out of the box 
So again, it's a little hit and miss. I guess it kind of helps to complement the hands because this side's kind of meh. This side looks great. <laughs> and this side looks kind of meh. This side looks great. Crazy. That's where my money goes. But for the feet, the molding does still look really awesome. We have that little toe kind of just coming out of the side of the foot there. Feet are done very nicely and do sit pretty level on the shelf. And I like too that his feet are really small. And have that kind of arcing upward dinosaur kind of expression. I don't want you hit his kneecaps. It's just like all gigantic all the time. Wait, does he have like he has chubby knee... grandma legs. Does he have two different kneecaps? Well, no, it's just like the one slightly more uh, oh, bulging okay. than the other. And then like, we'll show you guys a little bit closer look at the tail, which goes oh, wow. on forever. Literally ever. But I do like that they still included the center little section here where you have the dorsal spines kind of raising up a little bit more. Then you see um, most of the rest of it. Like even this section, he doesn't really have any dorsal spines at all. And what's also weird too is that like this part here is super glossy for the red and looks very bloody. And then these two parts aren't quite as bloody. This part barely has any gloss on it at all. And then we go to gloss and back up. So it's kind of weird that the segmenting looks so much different between each section. Because even coming up to here, you can start noticing there's a little bit more gloss here. And then moving back up, you get a little bit more red. And then we get the tip of his tail. Which always kind of confused me on what's going on here. Because, spoiler alert, at the end of the film, uh, there's little Godzilla people that are kind of like making their way out of this. Trying to free themselves from it. But then, in certain scenes, like when he's shooting atomic breaths out of his tail, there's like a little head on here. And you can even see, bringing it around... Uh, right there, you got a little Godzilla face. Creepy. Which just like opened up and then he's just like spraying atomic blast everywhere. Because you can even start to see like some of the dorsal spines forming for the new Godzilla there. But then, instead of another Godzilla coming out, it was a bunch of little ones. So I never really quite understood what was going on at the end of his tail. Other than, I guess he, that's how he reproduces in the film. is through his tail. Because that's weird. God, that's boring. <laughs> you know, just a little bit <laughs> but for the details for it looked disgusting like this entire Godzilla is just gross looking in comparison to most of the other ones they're just like standard cool giant monsters this guy kind of creeps me out at night in a good way in a good way where his tail is very flesh toned and then it has a lot of gloss over top of it to get that nice slime to it and you can just see all those really nice molded details on the tail it just so much work was really put into the sculpting on this. His sculpt is fantastic. Problem is, his paint job, a little bit hit and miss compared to most of the other monster arts in the line. Also, one thing I want to bring up too about this figure is uh, he's slightly dangerous, or at least in my opinion, because his dorsal spines to me are very pointy, very sharp, and there's a lot of edges here. And when you pick them up, when you like go to grab them like this, it feels like little serrated blades. <laughs> so it hurts like hell yeah be a little careful when grabbing him i tend to pick him up by the his the front of his section and hold him by the tail i don't try to pick him up like grasp him around because uh yeah he already started trying to stab me and i don't appreciate my godzilla's trying to injure me anyways moving on to his articulation his head can look down about that far Upwards about that far. I kind of wish his head could maybe look up a little bit because the only way you can really op have him looking straight up is if you open his mouth and then you go up his mouth about that far. Closes about that far. And you can kind of adjust it too. So if you want his lower jaw kind of sitting out to line up with the base of his mouth. You can accomplish that. Which is really cool to see. And then his head can also lean a little bit side to side. Nothing too crazy. Uh, for his shoulders. Can go up about that far. Down about that far. Uh, can you rotate all the way around? Nope. He sticks about there, it feels. And then you can get a, still a crazy amount of articulation in that shoulder. And then his arm can swing up about that far. Inwards about that far. Pretty decent bend at the elbow. Hand can rotate all the way around. The hand feels like the scariest thing for me because this joint isn't very big. So that's the one thing I really don't want to play with a whole lot. But it's nice to see that his arms are actually very articulated for how small they really are. His little T-Rex arms can definitely do some work. And for his waist, can lean to the side about that far. And the other side about that far. He can look down 
which is kind of hard because you don't really want to grab back here to push down on him. But you can get him to shift looking down about that far so you can literally look at his toes, which That's is really disturbing. cool to see. Well, because in the film, he does that whole like breathing smoke out of his mouth and then he's like and shooting beams. So it's really nice if you want to recreate that pose, he can do that. And then he straightens up yeah, about that far. And for his legs, you can go outwards about that far, inwards about that far. Move out, <laughs> grabbing the dorsal spine, okay. bad idea. Forward about that far, back about that far. Nice bend at the knees, straighten up about that far, and then bend in about that far. A little bit of a wiggle, nothing too crazy. His foot can go side to side, bend a little bit forward, a little bit back. Uh, his joints are really stiff though in mine, which I like to see, but it just makes me kind of worry about the little segmenting. And then for his tail, each of these are on ball joints and they're segmented, starting right here. I couldn't really tell if that's actually a joint, but there's a joint there. So there's a segment there, right here, and that's segment, this, and then moving down the tail here. So his tail. Has a lot of posability. Swing it side to side very nicely. And it's really good to see too that again, it holds its pose very nicely. Really impressed by that because uh, like my Godzilla 2000, literally it has to lay on the table. That's all it can do. While some of my other ones like uh, GMK, his tail can pose up a little bit more. And there's no real rotation here at the tail because the way it's molded, it doesn't really allow that. But at the tip of the tail, I'm thinking you could probably get this to swivel a little bit, but nothing too crazy. And then, a lot of really nice play Stop here. Stop playing with it, Steve. It's disturbing. <laughs> and for some quick comparisons, here we have the Essex Monster Shin Godzilla compared next to some other Shin Godzilla figures with the Bandai Vinyl Final Form, the second and third form. And here he is next to some Essex Monsters figures with the GMK 2001 Godzilla and the 2004 Godzilla. Quick question, Steve. How much bigger was he in the movie than the other guys? Uh, he is the tallest Godzilla. He's a little bit larger than 2014. Comparisons, he like towers over all of them. Well, yeah, well, technically, GMK is only like 50 meters. Ah. So, GMK should be about here on this guy. <laughs> and then he should be closer to probably around the... It's not that far off, maybe about here. Still, though, that's just crap how big he is. Well, it's nice to see that he scales pretty well with 2014. But most of the other Godzillas don't really scale well outside of their era. And here is comparing next to some Ultraman figures with the SH Figure Arts Ultraman Original and the Ultra Act Father of Ultra. Oh, I get this comparison, Steve. You're trying to compare who has more red. Shh. That, I, I mainly just want to do this because I just actually acquired this guy. <laughs> just want to show I him off. I want to show him off. <laughs> Father of Ultra, awesome. And finally, here he is next to some NECA Godzilla figures with the 1954 Godzilla and GMK 2001. Which, again, this monster towers over pretty much everybody. So he's supposed to evolve from this thing, right? Pretty much is what they're saying. No, he is his own thing. He has nothing to do with any Godzilla. So he has no, like, the, everyone else from the uh, last movies we watched. Yeah, like the Millennium. It's like 1954, and then so many years later, we have a new Godzilla. That's not... He literally started from scratch. But anyways, just uh, turn him sideways real quick, just so you guys can see. The tail compare... That's not cool, Steve. <laughs> Don't compare sizes, man. Like, let's give GMK a head start. <laughs> it still ain't happening. So overall, the Essex Monster, it's Godzilla 2016. I overall actually really enjoy this figure. Uh, the paint job is definitely inconsistent between uh, him and most other Essex Monster Arts releases because it's just all over the place on this guy with the red splotches being in some spots that were not supposed to be and there's some that's paints that's a little bit more kicked down than others. But I really like the glossy paint job that they gave to him. I've heard some people complain about that, but I really like the more wet look he has. It really helps to... Kind of convey what the kaiju was feeling in the movie. And he does actually come out of water, so it makes sense to me. But I love the articulation on this guy. It's actually probably one of my more favorite articulations out of most monster arts that uh, we've gotten recently. Uh, probably the next best one would be GMK. And I think his details, like the mold on this guy is phenomenal. It's just I wish they would have spent a little bit more time perfecting the paint job on him. 
My favorite thing about him, Steve, is his whole scary aspect, like the tail and all the flesh tones on him. His mouth, just like, he looks scary. And I love that. That's what Godzilla's supposed to be, right? Yeah, he's supposed to, well, at least the original incarnation of him was definitely supposed to be a more terrifying kaiju. And he definitely will stand out on your shelf as being probably the most unique looking kaiju out of the bunch. Still, I just can't get over his hands. I'm sorry, guys. I just can't. I don't know, I th especially on this figure, it'll, I really don't mind the hands. Like, on the Bandai vinyl, it's definitely a little dorky. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but on him, it's a little bit more fitting. And in the movie, it worked really well, too. Uh, now, do I recommend him at the prices that I see him going for right now at around $200? Can't. That's double what you paid for. Yeah, yeah if you could find him somewhere in Japan or somebody selling him for pretty reasonable, I would go a little higher. Because they did, like, import it and get it stateside. It's always going to be a little bit more money. But at the $200 price range, that's a little bit hard to recommend. Uh, if you can find them for, uh, I'm going to say $150 would be my tops. Yeah. Because he is a big kaiju, especially compared to most of the other guys. It's just the pain inconsistencies just hurt this guy a little bit, in my opinion. But not enough to make me deter him or want to get rid of him. You want to sell yours, Steve? No. You will buy it for one <laughs> After I had to wait for freaking <laughs> for almost a month to get this guy, I'm just super excited to add to my collection. And if you guys picked him up, you'd be really excited with him as well. But what do you guys think of the SD's Monster Godzilla 2016? Have you picked your guys' up yet? Or is TriStar just more your thing? Please let us know in the comments. A little closer pictures of him on our website if you want to click the link in the description below. Also, the review would also have been put out a day in advance. So if you guys haven't been checking out the website, definitely go check that out periodically because we do put the reviews up there a day in advance. So if there's a review you've been really waiting for, it'll definitely show up there before it shows up on here. We also have a Patreon account if you want to help support the channel. Also, link in the description below. And help us defeat those kaijus by hitting that like button, subscribe, become a ranger today, and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.